You can't do it. This isn't for you. You need to be brainy to have your own business. You need a degree to be successful. You'll never walk again. Your child will never speak. Have you ever been told that you or your child couldn't do something? How did you feel and how did you react? Did it make you feel like giving up or did it bring out your fighting spirit? I'm Chrissy B and you are watching the UK's only TV show dedicated to mental health and well-being. And today we'll be giving you tips and advice on how to make the best of seemingly negative situations. I'll be welcoming on a very special young lady called Charlotte who was diagnosed with atypical autism at three years old and doctors expected her to remain non-verbal. But at the age of five, something amazing happened. Joining her will be her mum Jane and our resident correspondent Anna Kennedy to tell you all about it. Also on the show today we have resident psychologist Dr Audrey Tang exploring why some people crumble at negative comments and why others use it as fuel to achieve their dreams. News correspondent Helena Shard will bring us the latest positive news. Dr Rob Hicks answers your medical questions in this week's Doctor's Answers segment and fitness expert Natalia Katoska takes us through a workout that you can do absolutely anywhere so there are no excuses. And finally, nutritionist Danielle Schein gives us a super healthy alternative for crackers and cereals to keep our health in tip-top shape. But let's start our show with the inspirational story of Charlotte, who's joined by her mum Jane and our resident guest, Anna Kennedy. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. So nice Hello. to have Hi. you on. Hi. Okay, so before we speak to the lovely Charlotte and the lovely Jane, let's start off with Anna with her updates about what's been going on. What's been happening, Anna? Well, some exciting news in the media. The NHS England now are saying that autism and learning disability are going to be part of their 10-year plan. So mm -hmm. what form that will take, we don't know yet. But we've heard that the NHS staff are going to be receiving um, autism awareness training but basic but we're not quite sure again what form that will take yeah, so yeah. it's exciting news yeah it's a start isn't yeah it? it's a yeah. start and also um the lovely chris brown who's mm. one of our regular contributors he yes. was part of the judging panel on autism hero awards yeah. and it was quite daunting the whole process because they just found it really difficult to choose three finalists uh, the 12 categories but they did it yeah. in the end for those that don't know what that is can you just explain what the what the awards yeah the are? autumn hero awards we're now in our third year and it's people than teachers businesses entrepreneurs that might go the extra mile mm -hmm. um, that are really doing so well in raising an awareness and acceptance for autism yeah. so we had top journalists we had care we had so many parent and carers yeah, um, yeah. so in the end we had to um, have about seven finalists rather than three because we were just wow. overwhelmed by the amount of parent and carers um, uh, yeah so it's going to be on October the 13th at the Radisson Blue okay. and that's when we announce all of the winners wow, and then there's amazing. two Anna's choice so one's for special recognition and the other one is for somebody that goes the extra mile for our charity wonderful so that's tough job to choose it is, right? it is <laughs> but it's it's really exciting and it's quite an emotional roller coaster of the evening okay. so but really lovely all right so Anna tell us how you know these two lovely ladies here next to us well Charlotte who's next to me she's appeared on Autumn's Got Talent quite a few times now <laughs> and she's also going to be singing at the Autumn Hero Awards with Calvin who was also Amazing. on uh, yeah. Chrissy B and they're going to be doing a duet from the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, lovely. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she's a wonderful singer. And Jane okay. is Charlotte's mum okay. and supports her and gets very excited every time she <laughs> sings on stage <laughs> and gets emotional. Right the front. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let, let's ask Charlotte first. When did you actually start singing, Charlotte? Um, when I was five. When you were five. Okay. And what, what, what do you like singing? I like singing all sorts of songs, like musical mm -hmm. and Disney. Okay, all right. Now there's something actually very special about our Charlotte here, isn't there? Because yeah. Jane, I'm going to ask you. Doctors actually told you that Charlotte would be non-verbal. Can, can you explain yeah. to us what happened? Yeah, so we went to the Maudsley um, and had a day-long um, assessment, um, which was really, really thorough. And, and right at the end, we had a meeting together with all the different professionals. Um, and they basically said that the prognosis is quite poor mm -hmm. um, because at the time she was sort of nearly four and yeah. not verbal at all and they said it was likely that she she would probably never ever speak. And this was due to the autism, yeah. was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so 
yeah, devastated mm. at the time. What went through your mind? Well, I just remember looking at her and seeing her sitting there in the middle of all of these, these chairs, mm. banging the radiator with a doll. And I just remember my heart breaking and thinking, oh yeah. my God, she's never gonna say mom or, you know, never do all of those things. Everything flashed through. I, it, it almost felt like a loss, really, yeah, yeah. like grieving for a loss. Mm -hmm. and I remember sitting on the train at London Bridge um, with her in a buggy and all of the commuters. And I remember looking around and thinking, wow, they have no idea what's just happened to us. Yeah, yeah. I remember looking at her in the buggy and just, yeah, devastated. But then something happened, didn't it? Yeah. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> so, so she continued, she used to love Disney when she was growing up. So mm. she used to sit and watch Disney. Um, and so she started saying one word things. Um, I think, yeah, not a lot though. Um, yeah. And I was upstairs putting the ironing away one day um, and I could hear singing. And obviously I realised it was different to, to the actual Sleeping Beauty, uh -huh. um, the actual Will CD. And for a split second, I just thought, who is, where's that singing coming from? <laughs> literally, just literally chucked my ironing on the bed, <laughs> went running down the stairs and she was oblivious to it all. So she was just sitting there, just staring at the, the, the television screen singing. Honestly, it was just, we didn't have, didn't have mobile phones then, so I couldn't really, for really oh, old, <laughs> we, didn't have mobile, we didn't have mobile phones then, so I couldn't sort of ring round, because um, this was some, some years ago, but just, just remember just, oh my God, you know, Do you remember happened. what she was singing at the time? Do you what remember was it? What, what, what was she singing? singing? I wonder. That's from Sleeping Beauty, yeah. Once Upon a Dream. Um, and yeah, it was, it really was like a dream. And I know it sounds really, really like cliche and a bit like corny, but honestly, and then I just kept rewinding it Aww. on the sofa just to hear her singing it. Um, Again. yeah. And, and quite literally, I think as soon as she realized that I could hear her singing and that I was acknowledging she was singing, yeah. she just start, and that was it really. She started to sing, um, then started to talk very, very slow still, but like it was yeah. a real moment like a massive moment i'll oh, never amazing. forget it it was amazing absolutely brilliant yeah so charlotte can you tell us about pineapple it was really really good i made such good friends there yeah so what do you do at pineapple usually i do singing mm -hmm. dancing and drama okay so and you do drama as well wow yeah i'm, I'm very good at it yeah and you're very good at singing, I hear, as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear you, you met Pixie lots as well? Yeah. What was that like? She, that was really, really great. I really like her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she liked you, I'm sure, as well. Because <laughs> I'm her favourite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they said you were part of her family, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, amazing. So, so on yeah. a Saturday, Charlotte goes to um, Italia Conti, Pixie lots in Chelmsford. Yeah. Um, and they've really taken Charlotte to their, to their heart, really. They've, yeah. Um, she's, yeah, accepted for who she is there. Yeah. She's got a really good relationship with her mum and okay. it's a really good place for her to be. Brilliant. And what about the future with the singing and everything? What's, what's going to happen? What do you want to do with your singing? I don't know. Try and, I might try and work hard to be a singer. Amazing. It's for everyone to know who you are. Yeah? <laughs> and to inspire others as well. Amazing. Can you tell us also about pineapple? Because you're actually involved with, with yeah, pineapple. Um, yeah, Autumn's Got Talent started because of pineapple. I was invited oh. to one of their shows at the Mermaid Theatre. Yeah. And I started looking around the theatre and I thought, I wonder if I can put on a show purely made up of autistic singers, dancers, comedians. Yeah. And I spoke to Maggie, um, who was on Chrissy B. Um, mm. And we said, how about we do something together? And it's just grown since then. So. Um, Oh, I think it was about three years ago, I spoke to Maggie and I said, how about giving me some scholarships for our Autumn's Got Talent performers? So we started yeah. off with um, three or four and it's now grown to nine. So we've got nine um, of our Autumn's Got Talent performers that go to do the singing, the dancing, the performing arts. They're mm -hmm. included in all of the pineapple shows. Um, Maggie's just celebrated 20 years. So um, we did a presentation um, from, what was the musical that you sang? on Maggie's show with the 20 year party. Can you remember? What did you sing? Your um, favourite song? Oh, I think it was This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. That's yeah. right, and they were amazing and everyone gave them a standing ovation. So it was a really special event. So yeah, Autumn's Got Talent has really given lots of opportunities. Yeah. 
um, mm. to our um, young people. And, um, you know, we've created charity albums, singers, um, like Angus, who's our magician, he's now um, going off doing um, shows and um, mm. weddings. And um, oh, it's just, it's, do you know what? It just yeah. gives them the opportunity to say, I can do this, you know, yeah. and it's a springboard mm. onto something else. So yeah, it, yeah. It, I can see a big difference in Charlotte as well from <laughs> when she first performed on Autumn's really? Got Talent yeah. and now singing, you know, mm. Phantom of the Opera with Calvin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. amazing. Yeah, so. I have to say, um, so that was the first time she ever really sung on, on a big stage when we applied for Autism's Got Talent. Yeah. Um, and it really literally has, again, sounds corny, but changed her life. I mean, she really? performed in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, really? So nice. Middlesbrough. Oh. Um, yeah, absolutely. And the whole team, and it's just amazing for her. She just had so much opportunity from it. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, had a confidence of sword. I have to ask you, Jane, because sometimes, just to address the, the mm. parents out there that maybe have just found out, for mm -hmm. example, that their child has autism, or maybe they've mm -hmm. been told also that their child will be non-verbal, and they're kind of feeling like it's the end of the world, and oh no, why has this happened to me? Yeah. All, those, all those initial feelings that you mm. probably had at the beginning, what, what advice would you give to them? Um, so I'd say that those feelings are pretty normal. Mm -hmm. um, the feelings of guilt, you know, I had feelings whether I'd actually caused it, all of that stuff that was going on for me. And for a little while I was really down, um, mm -hmm. having another, and having more, I had other children as well. Um, and I think it was a doctor who said to me, he said, the best bit of advice I can give you is to get, give her the best education, mm -hmm. find the best place for her. Um, so I looked everywhere um, yeah. and found a specialist unit for Charlotte. Okay. Um, and it was hard and it doesn't necessarily get easy mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, but my advice, I don't know, is just to take each day and to, I suppose it sounds corny, cool, never give up hope. Yeah. Um, just pushing and believing in them. No. What do you love about Charlotte? Um, no, I don't know. I know you love to push your daughter, but <laughs> what's special about her? What's um, special? I don't know, because she, she never gives up. Um, she, she, she doesn't know, but she inspires me too. She never gives up, really. She doesn't care what people think or say, because yeah. um, that can be pretty cruel too. There's there. something about autism that gives parents, m most parents, a lot of strength yeah. um, to do other things. Like you just, you were talking to me about you've just qualified as a counsellor yeah. now, and what you oh, want to do right. is specialise in autism. Yeah. And it that, that that there's just something about it that even yeah. though it's it's tough, mm. but there's those special moments that we share amongst each yeah. other. But it also gives you an inner strength that. You, you can achieve anything and it, it's just like it's just like you're fighting for your mm. children if you like so yeah. that they get the same quality of life as everybody else yeah. and why shouldn't they exactly yeah. and actually the title of today's show is when other people say you can't okay so. and charlotte people said that you would never speak and you not only speak but you sing as well which is absolutely amazing so thank you so much for coming on today and all the best with your singing i'm sure we're going to be hearing lots more from you Jane, thank you also very you. much for coming on and, and for sharing your story. Anna, any final words? Anything that you, you didn't well, cover today? Well, little birdie that... tells me that you got a special recognition award. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and very well deserved for all the work that you do raising awareness about mental health. So thank I'm really proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so we'll see you again soon, Anna. Mm -hmm. And all the best ladies for the future. Thank you. OK, everybody. Well, after, oh, by the way, um, Charlotte will be singing for us towards the end of the programme. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Well, after the break, we have on our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, discussing why some people crumble at negative comments, whilst others use it as fuel to achieve their dreams. And our news correspondent, Helena Shard, is back with more positive news for us. So don't go away.
Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everyone. And we've titled this program, When Someone Tells You That You Can't. So now we have on Dr. Audrey Tang, who is our resident psychologist on the program. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So Audrey, tell me, why is it that some people will actually crumble when they hear uh, negative news or when someone maybe tells them something like, oh, you're never going to make it, mm -hmm. whereas others use that as fuel to actually achieve their dreams? The research suggests two key things. One mm. is mastery, the amount of control somebody feels that they have over their life, and the other is social support. Um, there are a couple of other things that I'll mention as well, but to look mm. at mastery first. This is the development of a very old concept called the locus of control, which is dates back to the 50s. And the idea here is some people have an internal locus of control, others have an external. Mm. Those with an internal feeling of control and mastery in their minds, they have a control over their destiny. They are not beholden to fate or luck or mm -hmm. any of those okay. external causes. Uh, those with an external locus, they are more, it's more related to, oh, it's just bad luck or I ha no matter what I do, nothing is going to go right. Okay. And that can also link to learned helplessness. And this is where somebody may learn it because of their experiences that maybe nothing can go right for them or they have little control over their lives. So if you take a child, for example, who doesn't have a lot of control when they're very little, they mm. are beholden to other people. If no matter what they do, they can't exert that control over the universe and they can't sort of see that they make an impact, then they can actually begin to think, well, nothing I do is going to make a difference. Okay. And when you have that sort of mindset, it's very difficult to see that, well, right, I failed, but I can pick myself up again because the feeling is more, well, mm -hmm. I failed and there's nothing I can do about it until my luck changes or until something else changes it for me. Okay. So that's one thing. It's whether we have mastery over our lives or feel we do or whether we, we don't. The next one is social support. And with social support, it's always nice to have somebody who, who likes us, who's, who's there for us, who will be on our side. But sometimes if you've got someone who's trying to make a change and everyone around them is almost trying to keep them in the same place that they were, it's very difficult. Okay. So it can be something as simple as you're on a diet, but everyone around you is trying to give you food and saying to you, oh, it won't hurt. It's just a bit of chocolate. It's just an ice cream. And then yeah. it's quite difficult to make that change. There are other elements as well that can make the reaction to failure different. And one I learned a lot when I was uh, teaching in a school. And this is I worked with a lot of gifted and talented students, many of whom were also high achievers because the outcome is the same. They do very well. They excel mm -hmm. at whatever it is they're doing. However, when you are gifted and talented, you have more of that tendency to be engaging whatever it is for yourself. You just enjoy doing the sport or playing the instrument okay. or practicing that skill. A high achiever is often doing it for the external validation, the external praise. And so if they fail suddenly for the gifted and talented, it doesn't matter because they can just do it again because okay. they were wanting to do that particular skill anyway for the high achiever the world, the world can crash down a lot right, okay. more because suddenly the praise isn't there okay. um, and the other thing is of course our inner voice what does that sound like it's some some of us have a very critical inner voice the, the one that says you're useless you failed you don't deserve this others of us may have a more laissez-faire inner voice that inner voice says ah oh, it's fine don't you worry about it and of course depending on what our voice is saying can affect our ability to deal with failure. Mm. If we're trying to make a change, it's really difficult if our own inner voice is saying to us, you'll never make it, you don't deserve this. And you, if you put it into the real context, would you want to work with somebody who, for somebody who cons consistently puts you down? Sure. But then again, if you have a very critical, uh, very, sorry, a very laissez-faire inner voice, then actually somebody saying to you, pull yourself together, get up and do this, is probably gonna work wonders for you. <laughs> Okay. If, you, if you are the type of person that has that critical voice and yeah. you are maybe a very negative person yeah. and you do kind of fall apart when you, things go wrong, when people yes. say things, can you change that, do you think? Yes, you can. There's a few techniques you can use. I'll mm -hmm. just go through them very quickly. One is the as-if technique. Behaving as if 
that was the desired outcome or behaving <laughs> as if somebody, you are someone who could have got through that. Yeah. So, you know, behaving as if Chrissy B was experiencing that yeah. and that might pull us through. Another thing is reframing, asking ourselves, what can we learn from this experience? Mm. Um, what has this taught me? Um, other things will be, of course, practice gratitude. So learn to appreciate what you have. Yes. Talk yeah. to other people who might support you. That can be a big help as well. And just be aware that is your failure to do with self-sabotage? Are you actually wanting mm. to not come back out there because of something in your own head that makes you want to stay down? And once you work that out, and that's probably a whole other show. I was about to say that. <laughs> that was, was really deep. Yeah. <laughs> like, once you work that out, then yeah. using the other techniques such as as if and reframing okay. can make a huge difference. Brilliant. Audrey, thank you so much. And Pleasure. we'll see you again next week. Yes. Thank you. Well, everyone, now it's time to go to A Helping of Happy with Helena Shard. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. What do you have in the news oh, for us today? Of, so many inspirational stories, so many lovely ladies oh. and gentlemen, boys and girls, and so I picked a few that I thought okay. were, were good ones. Good. And we're beginning with Paul Dummett, who's a famous um, footballer. Mm -hmm. He's now 26, but the main story of him is he is with Newcastle United, and he was told when he was 16 by Alan Pardy, who was the manager at the time, that he would never make it. Oh. And which was quite sad for him in a way because even at the age of 20 he was still thinking oh you know I don't know if I'm good enough and he saw all these other stars around him that, that he thought were better mm. were better and he'd been with them in their academy since the age of age of eight but anyway he's done you know he's done incredibly yes, well yes. so that's a good thing so um, he also was mocked by his friends because he was loaned out to a, a lower team I think Gateshead and they were like what are you doing you know that's madness I wouldn't dream of doing it and of course they're not playing football anymore mm, and he is, he is. Yeah. Um, so the main thing about him is that his determination and commitment got him to the first team yeah and um, in fact in a funny kind of way Alan Pardy was the making of him because by saying you're not going to make it yeah, yeah. he realized when he his, his reply was well I'll show you so he knew from that <laughs> moment that he was going to do well and he is yeah, I mean he's brilliant. 26 now and I think he's with them until 2022 or something okay. so he's doing really yes. well yeah, so... Um, Good for him. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, also a story, I'm Possible. Um, it's a success story really to inspire everybody and people with disabilities too to work and dream. Um, a statistic I didn't realise that just under a third of employable people with disabilities in Russia are employed. I have to say I'm saying that, I don't know what the stati statistics are here, but anyway. Um, Nikita Panichev, who's 25, absolutely loves his work and now he's hoping to be promoted. Um, he has Down syndrome and a charity helped set him up in a coffee eatery place. So sort okay. of breaking down stereotypes, which mm. is great. And the owner of the outlet said that Nikita, his work is the same standard every, as everyone. And in fact, he, if anything, he's got more drive. Oh, well, yeah. And so it, it's like they work 12 hour days, so mm. it's a long day. And he's taken inspiration really from the Paralympians, which is quite exciting. Mm. Um, sort of saying people with disabilities are also people with abilities. And it's not just in the sports arena. Yeah. And, and the special thing about him as well, he's also got a second job weaving tapestries mm -hmm. to earn more money because his dream is to have his own restaurant oh, which is not lovely yeah, it's nice. really lovely um, moving on to Samu Vidic who's a photographer quite mm -hmm. a famous photographer and he's got an exhibition out called defying all odds he's mainly a sp sports photographer so mm -hmm. he decided to shine a light on disabled athletes who've really overcome the odds to achieve great things so okay. the photographs are quite powerful and he highlights different sports people and their stories in contrasting ways, two contrasting ways. So firstly, a portrait showing their personalities and physical challenges, mm -hmm. and then a dynamic action shot which shows oh, their so nice. achievement, which is yeah. really lovely, isn't it? So yeah, good for some. I haven't seen the pictures, but they sound yeah. great, so I do want to see them. And a couple of other ones slightly similar in a way, but quickly, Arthur Ballman uh, was a disabled veteran, war veteran, mm -hmm. and he was told by medical people that he wouldn't get any better, he wouldn't be able to walk. So for 15 years he sat there and thought, that's okay, I've had it. He put on a huge amount of weight. Then he decided to look into exercise mm -hmm. um, and stretching and really to, to give himself strength. And he had one fitness expert who was supporting him. And he really every single day, even though he was falling over, he was really trying. And then, but he did incredibly well. And within a, within a year, 
believe it or not, was walking and running. That's amazing, and especially if we've just not done anything for 15 years and yeah. then like you... He was so yeah. determined. I mean, he'd lost £100 in six months and £140 in 10 months and completely transformed his life. Mm. And he was thinking, you know, why didn't I do this 15 years ago? Mm. Well, because so, the main thing is yeah, he's done it now. Yeah, he did it, yeah, well which done. is great. Oh, yeah. And also a lovely story as well, which is, it's so true of a lot of um, ex-Royal Marines or ex-war veterans. Um, I love him to bits, says ex-Royal Marine John Flint about his dog Jester. And anyway, so his dog Jester came from a, a British charity called Canine Partners. Mm -hmm. And he was actually really quite depressed because he was having to rely on lots of people, his friends and family, okay. to do things, to get him out of bed, various things. Yeah. Just backtracking a little bit, he actually, believe it or not, for 14 years he had a, a broken back. But it was like two very bad fractures. But because oh. he was so fit, because you uh -huh. had to be Olympian fit, he didn't didn't he know. Did, he he didn't managed know. to combat oh, it 14 years. So obviously he stopped. He got a normal uh, wow. job in security. And then he started with the niggling pain yeah. and ended up in a wheelchair. Wow. But anyway, so he went through a depressed stage. But the good thing is, is that obviously he's got his freedom back because yeah. these dogs are incredible. Mm -hmm. They're trained up to you know help you do washing and pick things up really? and get you out of bed. Oh wow! Really special. But I mean, there's lots lots of lovely stories like that. But I just yeah, yeah I think pretty amazing. Amazing. Wow, brilliant. Helena, thank you so much for <laughs> the inspiring you, news and we'll see you again next yes, week. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Well, everyone, do stay tuned because after the break, we have on fitness expert Natalia Katowska with a workout that you can do anywhere, so absolutely no excuses. And also, Dr. Rob Hicks will be answering your medical questions, including this one. What could be the reason for not doing a poo for days? Find out after this break. Hi, I'm Chrissy B, host of the UK's only TV programme dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, which airs on MyTV Sky 191 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow our social media on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at Chrissy B Show and our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. For more information, visit chrissybshow.tv. Welcome back to today's programme everyone and now it's time for Doctor's Answers with Dr Rob Hicks. Welcome to the show Rob. Hello Chris, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I feel a bit giggly today, I've been what babbling on all day. Oh, have you? Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe it's the donuts and it, too much well, sugar for you. I, I haven't touched them yet. Yet, okay. I've been very good. Very good. Very okay. after, after you've answered the questions from our viewers then you can have a donut. Deal? Oh bless you. Brilliant. Okay, so first question Rob. I had an issue with an itchy scalp some years ago. I was given shampoo from the doctor that never really seemed to help. I used natural oils and this made a difference to the itching. However, I still suffer with dryness. Do you have any solutions for this? Yes. Good, that's I what I like the to answer. hear. Yes. yes. The, the first question I would ask anybody who talks about a single symptom, mm -hmm. particularly one like this, is are there any other symptoms? So for example, with your dry scalp, do you also have any redness? Um, do you have any soreness? Do you have any irritation? Do you actually have you know, dry areas of skin on other parts of your body as well? Because you know, people often notice that the, the scalp is dry, but they've ignored the fact that maybe their elbows or their knees are, are also dry as well. So that gives a clue then as to what might be the underlying cause. If it's simply dryness, you know, um, and you said that you had you know, itching before, um, if there's some flaking as well, then, then it could easily be dandruff. Um, other conditions that dryness of the scalp can be a symptom of, uh, seborrheic dermatitis is a type of eczema, um, eczema itself, psoriasis, um, it could be even a, a fungal infection. So if this is an ongoing problem, um, and whether you've got other symptoms or not, then I think it's worthwhile you asking your doctor to look at your scalp in case it's something that needs a specific medic medicated treatment. Some of the causes of dryness of the scalp, you know, is actually dry air, for example, or lots of sun exposure. That will dry the, the, the scalp skin out, um, just like it does the rest of the, the skin on the body. 
Um, the other things are if you're washing your hair too often, um, if you're using hair care products that may well result in a dry scalp, no matter if they're making the hair look fantastic, they could still dry out the scalp. If you're you know, over styling your hair or over drying your hair, or simply if you're getting dehydrated, you know, um, you know, the scalp skin needs to be hydrated just like the rest of the body. So those are the sort of things to consider. Maybe experiment a bit with you know, washing your hair less frequently, not, not blow drying it on such a hot setting, for example, changing the hair care products. Uh, but at the, the bottom line is really, you know, once your GP's made a diagnosis of what the problem is, if there is an underlying treatment that's needed, then you can be offered that and that should solve the problem. And make sure you drink lots of liquid as well, you know, to make sure that the, the body's hydrated. Try an anti-dandruff shampoo um, in the meantime. And, the, and, and, you know, with dry skin on the scalp, you know, if it's not a specific medical condition, it is often a case of just trial and error with lifestyle measures. Yeah. Lovely. Next question, Rob. I am often bloated, which unfortunately leads to embarrassing situations during meetings as the air can be heard rumbling in my stomach. This happens at any time of the day, so there doesn't seem to be any pattern. Can anything help with this? You know what, this is actually, um, we, we've all had this, and you know, you try and stop it, yeah. don't we? We all reach thinking we can, pings, we can it stop it. Well yeah. And, it? and yeah. so, so to, to, the fact that everybody gets it at some point in, in, their, in their life means that we should try not to be embarrassed about it. it, yeah. it, for, it it's a normal process, you know, nine times out of ten. Yes, it sounds like you're getting embarrassed by it. Um, what's causing the rumbling? Well, it's usually the passage of food and drink going through the intestines. It can be down to having excess wind in the abdomen. Um, it can be down to air swallowing. So when you're talking, eating or drinking, you're taking in air as well. It may actually be that you're hungry. In, in which case, you know, make sure that you have some food on a regular basis, but ideally b before your meetings. You mentioned bloating as well. You know, uh, common causes of if that is constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, celiac uh, disease. So those can cause bloating, as can many other conditions. So th the fact that you've got rumbling and bloating, um, you know, would, would make me think that really you should have a checkup with your doctor. Because if, if there's rumbling with other symptoms, whether it be bloating, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, it often means there is an underlying medical condition, even if that's, you know, simply constipation. So um, have, have a checkup with your doctor to, to get to the, to the root cause of this. In the meantime, I would suggest that you, you try things that can actually improve the passage of gas through the body, so you might want to try, and particularly if it is constipation, you might want to try increasing your fibre, being more active, drinking more liquid, reducing stress, and answering the call of nature when Mother Nature tells you you need to go to the toilet. Um, sometimes be aware though that um, increasing fibre can actually make more gas and make bloating and rumbling worse. So again, it's a case of trial and error. You know, have a have have a, have a try with more fibre. If you're finding that's worsening the situation, obviously re try reducing the fibre. Um, and then think if it's a lots of you know if it could be gas related, then you might want to reduce your consumption of gas producing fruit uh, foods. So you know. Um, green leafy vegetables, uh, Brussels sprouts, for example, that sort of thing. Um, lentils is another one. Um, and beer um, is, is, uh, can increase the amount of gas. But have a check up, let's see what's going on. And then you'll be offered the advice on how to avoid these, what for you are embarrassing situations within meetings. Okay, well, next final question actually for today. What could be the reason for not doing a poo for days? That's a really good question, isn't it? I just have to say, Rob, with this one, this was actually from uh, someone from Africa. Okay. So just letting you know that in case it's something different with yeah. the climate or... Yeah, well, it could be. It could be because one of the, um, the likely causes of this... Is, it, well, let's, let's think about not going for days. Mm -hmm. It could be normal. Yeah, so it might be that, that, you know, somebody... Every member of the person's family goes every day and they actually go every three days, you know, every three days. They only go three times a week, let's mm. say. And that's normal. You know, the normal range of bowel opening ranges from three times a day to three times a week. That's considered mm. medically normal. So what I'm asking is whether this is a change for you. That's what's important. This is a change to your normal habit. Um, if it is and you're not getting any other symptoms, then the odds are that this is uh, the most likely cause of this constipation for whatever reason. In a hot climate, that can be through dehydration, um, or it might be that you've gone without certain foods, so enough fibre in the diet for, for a while. 
Um, it can also be down to a side effect of medication. Um, supplements like iron, iron is notorious for constipating people, so that could be the cause. Or it could be a change in environment. You know, some people when they go on holiday or they go and stay with people, feel a little bit anxious about going to the toilet because they're in a different place to where they normally go. Um, so, so, so that will, you know, not only stop you from going for a few days, but it may cause you to be a bit bummed up, a bit constipated. If you've got other symptoms, whether you know, that might be um, pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting, uh, fever, then, uh, then, then that usually means there's an underlying medical condition. It might be something it, like irritable bowel syndrome. It could be potentially be some kind of obstruction in the bowel. So what I would say to you is that if the change that you've experienced is simply you've just not been for a few days and you've not got any other symptoms, then try the lifestyle um, things that were mentioned for our other viewers. So more fiber, more liquid, more activity, um, particularly liquid if you're in a hot climate because of the dehydration risk, um, trying to get stress under control, you know, and going when you feel the need to go rather than putting it off. Um, and maybe try in a simple laxative to get things going. If those measures don't work, or if you have other symptoms, as I've talked about, then I think it's very important that you get a doctor's advice, particularly if you're getting pain, if you're feeling nauseous, if you're vomiting, or you've got any sort of fever associated with your symptoms. Okay. Thank you so much, Rob. My pleasure. I wish I'll see you again yes, next, you will. next week. Thank you. And remember, everybody, if you have a question for Dr. Rob Hicks, all you need to do is email us on doctor at chrissybshow.tv. So now it's time to have a look at a different aspect of health, and this time it's fitness with Natalia Katowska. Hey guys, my name is Natalia Katowska, and Katie Wood with Nat, your fitness expert, fitness instructor. And I'm very excited for today, because today I'll show you some functional movement for our core stability. I'm extremely excited because for me, very important is to use all functional movement so you can take it home, take it to your work environment, take it outside, wherever you are. You travel, you're at home, you're in your office, any environment. Today I'll present you plank, very important functional movement because it helps our core stability including all muscles in the whole body. So, let me show it to you. First variation is very simple. I want you to hold it nice and tight. So tuck your belly button in, tuck your belly button in, breathe in, hold your hands above your shoulders. Look in front if you can, it's not ideal to look at the floor but I know that it's quite difficult to keep looking in front but if you can please do it squeeze your glutes so your cheeks squeeze it use your legs and hold it for maybe 30 up to 60 seconds if you can that's the first variation second one once you're here you want to touch your shoulders hop hop again at least 30 seconds if you can go for 60 seconds keep holding keep holding keep touching keep working again remember about that belly button squeeze your glute squeeze your uh, up your glutes hold it and try to touch your shoulders next ones once you're here what we can do is go on our elbows low all the way up Change side, all the way up. Again, if you can, go for 60 seconds. If you need a break, that's fine. Take a deep breath in, have a 60 seconds of break, come back to your exercise. Remember, elbows all the way up. Once you're on your elbows, hold it here and use your hips. Go all the way down, down, down. Almost touching with your hips. Floor. So you want to use your core as much as you can, use your hips, keep touching, keep touching. Again, if you can, hold it. If you cannot, walk out, take a deep breath in, get yourself ready for the last one. Side, holding side. You want to go on your um, heels over there, hold it, 
Tuck your belly button in and hold. If you can, hold your hips and do the hip dips. In, out. If it's too difficult, again, you can be on your elbows. Again, over here. In, out. In, out. And after one side, you change to the other side. And with this variation, you have at least five, six minutes of intensive workout. Thank you so much for today. I hope you enjoy it. And let's train together, guys. See you next time. Thank you very much to Natalia there. Well, after the break, we have a super healthy alternative for crackers and cereals made by the lovely Danielle Shine. And also, Charlotte, who we met earlier, will be performing for us. Who knows what MHD stands for? Oh, brilliant. Yes, Mental Health Dance Challenge. <laughs> Welcome back to today's program, everyone. And for our regular viewers, you all know that we love to uh, feature nutrition on this program because it does really influence your mental health and well-being. So here's a super healthy alternative for crackers and cereals made by the lovely Danielle Shine. Hi, everybody. If you're someone who likes to snack in between your main meals, then it's wise to keep your foods real, filling and health supportive like the recipe I'm going to show you how to make right now. My chocolate flaxseed crackers are filled with healthy fats and protein to keep you fuller for longer. They taste great with some nut butter or some chia seed jam and they're pretty easy to make. So come and join me in the kitchen and let's get started. Chocolate flaxseed crackers are easy to make and take with you wherever you go. They taste great and fill you up, not out. Perfect if you're mindful about making good food choices for your health. Mix raw chocolate powder, known as cacao powder, together with ground flaxseed for a good dose of omega-3 fatty acids and dietary fiber. Add raw granulated sugar, organic is best. Then mix everything together to combine really well. Make sure there are no lumps remaining. Sometimes it helps to mix these ingredients with a fork to help break up any clumps. Add fresh drinking water, which activates the ground flaxseed to become glutinous, helping to bind all of the ingredients together. Mix really well until you have a sticky, chocolatey, wet dough. At this stage, let the mix rest and thicken further by covering with a tea towel and leaving for at least 10 minutes. When ready, add a little more flaxseed to help transfer it from the bowl to a piece of baking paper. Because this mix is a little sticky and stubborn, place it between two pieces of baking paper and roll it out to a quarter inch thickness which will take up the majority, if not all, of your baking paper. Score the dough with a knife so it's easy to break apart once baked. And create some breathing holes with a fork that will help the crackers to bake evenly. Transfer to a baking tray and place in a preheated oven until the crackers harden and darken in color. This should take about 20 to 30 minutes depending upon your oven, so keep an eye on them. Remove and leave to cool before separating. Enjoy with nut butter, chia seed jam, or savory dips like hummus. Thanks for watching. So everybody, we are reaching the end of today's program and I hope you've really enjoyed it and have been inspired today, especially by Charlotte, our real life story guest, who was told that she wasn't going to be able to speak at all, but now she's singing and speaking very well. 
So as you can see, um, you know, even though people may say something's impossible, that is not always the case. And by the way, do stay tuned because Charlotte's going to be singing for us in just a moment. But what I would like to highlight today, which I think is very important, it's the belief in oneself. Because to be honest, even if, for example, everyone else believes in you and is always encouraging you and telling you that you can do it and really they're cheering you on, but if you don't believe you can do something, no matter how many people are telling you that you can, you probably won't be able to muster up the strength to do it. However, the opposite can also be true where um, if you believe in yourself and you believe that you can do something, everyone else can be telling you the opposite but you will still have the strength to do it. So it is really, really important that you do develop that inside of you and start practicing that. But what I want to actually um, focus more on is the mental health side of things. As I've said before, when I was going through depression and panic attacks and the, mental health, the previous mental health issues that I had, at the time, mental health wasn't really spoken about very much. I never heard it mentioned on the news, on TV, like we do nowadays. Uh, almost every time I put my TV on and watch the news, there's something about mental health on. Um, you know, the doctors weren't really talking about, when I went to the doctor, they didn't really mention uh, too much to me about, they didn't really explain anything to me. My doctor just said, oh, I'm just gonna refer you for counseling. So I still didn't really know what was going on. So, and, I, and all the other things that I tried, including the counseling, where my own counselor said to me that he, he wasn't there to help me, but just to listen to me. All that actually was like people telling me that this problem is here to stay because we don't know what to do about it. We don't know what to, what to say about this. However, what was really important that I think got, what got me through and what got me finding the right help is that I did believe that I could recover. So even though it seemed like everyone else around me was quite negative or wasn't really offering me the help that I needed, inside I believed that, and I held on to that belief, even though I felt very weak and very useless sometimes, but I held on to the belief that I could recover. And that's what kept me searching until I find the right help. And I did, within a few months, a very short period, I did recover from issues that I had for seven years previously. Uh, so within a few months, everything gone. I've not been depressed or had panic attacks or any of those issues now for over 21 years. So what I would like to encourage you to, on today's program, never ever lose hope. And I have mentioned this before, but it's so, so important because if you give up on yourself, no one can help you. So make sure whatever mental health issue that you are going through, hold on to that belief that you can recover, that you can live a full and meaningful life. Well, everyone, we have almost reached the end of today's program because as I said, Charlotte will be singing for us in just a moment. But if you have a story that you would like to share, please do email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also contact us on our social media, on Instagram and Twitter at chrissybshow and on our Facebook page, the Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about my story with mental health, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. So let's now finish the show with Charlotte Fieldson singing Over the Rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up There's a land I heard of once in a lullaby Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true someday i wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly over the rainbow Why? 
by then. Oh, why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why? Oh, why?